Hi there, I'm Linda Lamis Verda, producer of Central Texas Gardener. Usually I'm behind the scenes, but today I'm behind the camera, the webcam that is. Summer's here and crops are zooming, but we've got some ideas for other things to include. So today we're gonna meet with Alejandra Rodriguez Bouton from her urban farm, La Flaca. Alejandra, thank you for taking time away on this beautiful day to be working outside. It's lovely to chat with you, Linda. Thank you for having me. Now, Alejandra, especially now, why is it important to have urban farms, locally grown food? Absolutely. So in this current situation we are in, there's been a lot of food systems that, that have been disrupted, you know, distribution and all that. So being able to have farms in your neighborhood allows us to have access to food, even in this trying time. You're set in there among some beautiful sunflowers and cornflowers. Are those just for show or what are you going to do with those? Yeah, so they are absolutely beautiful, but these are not only for show. In the case of the sunflowers, both the petals and the hearts are edible, so no part of the flower goes wasted. Uh, we also use the petals to dry them and make jewelry and art with them. And in the case of the cornflowers, I like to make what I call flower confetti. So you grab the flower, you remove the petals from the base, and it's just like lovely confetti. So what other kind of flowers do you grow in the summer? Or what can we be seeding now for uh, pollinators or for edible purposes? So you can, cornflowers, the season is over. There's definitely a cool season flower. Sunflowers, you can still, still seed them throughout the summer. And I would definitely recommend adding both Thai and Indian basil to your garden. Not only will this grow throughout the summer when Italian basil won't be able to survive, they will produce a ton of flowers that pollinators absolutely love throughout the summer and make your garden look bright and joyful. What about African blue basil? I love the flowers on that. Somewhere I heard, oh, maybe that's not the best one for cooking. But what do you think? I love that you mentioned African blue basil because personally, that is my favorite basil of all time. Number one, African blue basil is the only basil that's actually a perennial. So if you take care of it and overwinter it, it will come back every year. This basil also does not produce seeds since it's a hybrid. So you have to get plants or cuttings to be able to reproduce it. And when it comes to cooking, some people actually believe that African blue basil, as you said, is not ideal for cooking, but I think it's delicious. One of my favorite pasta recipes is prosciutto with a pink sauce, and I finish it with African blue basil, which takes really well to cooking. You know, when some basils will just like disintegrate, African blue basil will stand up really well to cooking and will just give your food this like very unique, delicious aroma. Well, I may have to leave you now because I got to go get some, but what is your, tell us, everyone has their own favorite pesto recipe and now that it's hot, pesto is a great option for a cooler kind of tasting meal in the summer. Do you have a favorite one you like? I absolutely love doing a pesto recipe with lots of African blue basil, garlic, and toasted pecans, which I like to put on basically anything from cheese to pasta to even like a salad dressing. Mm. So one of the flowers I really like in the fall for pollinators and for the garden is a plant that's also special to you culturally, and that is Mexican mint marigold. Tell us about that one. Absolutely. Mexican mint marigold is a wonderful plant to add to your garden. A lot of people that like to cook, you know, we love tarragon, but tarragon is not something you can grow in Texas, whereas mint marigold is a perennial that will grow absolutely fantastic here in central Texas and you'll have that beautiful tarragon-like anise-like flavor that you can add to teas, butter, fish. It's just wonderful in cooking. And talking about why it is important in my culture, marigolds have been grown in Mexico since pre-Hispanic times. So it, they are very important to our culture. For example, uh, Mexican mint marigold, uh, the flowers, which have a very a lot of aroma are 
smoked by the Wichol tribe in ritual ceremony. So the flowers you can actually smoke and they make a very relaxing smoke. They can be used for dyes and they also uh, are representative are on our celebration of Day of the Dead. How lovely. Now, one thing I've done in the past, do you do this, is to drop a few of the petals into a vinegar and maybe even with a few hot peppers for a kind of a spicy um, vinegar, like a tarragon type of vinegar. Is that something you like to do? Are there any tricks to that? So there's two things that I love doing with Ms. Marigold. The flowers, like you said, can be used in vinegars and they will make a very bright yellow colored vinegar. Uh, mint mar the mint marigold flowers are some of the flowers that have the mo highest concentration of both dye and aroma. So even a small amount of flowers, you're going to get a lot of fragrance. And then the other thing you can do is use the actual leaves of mint marigold, infuse them in brandy. Uh, and we, you can go back to the segment we did talking about infused liquors uh, for more tips on that. And once you have your mint marigold brandy, you put a little bit of that into your hot chocolate in the fall, you will never go back, Linda. And using mint marigold in your hot chocolate, again, is something that's very traditional in Mexico. It gives like a sweetness, uh, a warmth in the flavor that's just lovely. Now that the heat is upon us, by now, a lot of the cilantro may have already bolted or maybe it's still bolted, That's it's going to flower. Yeah. You all use the flowers in arrangements. What else can we do with the flowers now if we still have them? Great question, Linda. So cilantro flowers are packed with flavor. So when you see your cilantro starting to bolt, let it be. The flowers, you can use them in salads, in eggs, in tacos. Anywhere when you would like a pop of cilantro, you can use the flowers. It's going to look so beautiful. But again, it's not just for show. You're going to get a burst of flavor if you add your cilantro flowers. Soups are another great one. And then after the flowers come the seeds. The seeds, you can uh, harvest them green when they're still green, and you can pickle them or make a vinegar with them, which is wonderful for both dressings and drinks, if you like Blood Mar Bloody Mary, for example. Or you can dry the seeds and we hang the whole plant, let them dry, and then we literally use that to sprinkle in new beds in the spring to grow our cilantro. So it's a never-ending cycle of more cilantro. And that is, once they're in the seed form, that's coriander. Is that right? Yeah. Once it's dry, the coriander seeds, we use them to grow our coriander next season. So we will just dry the big bushes, and once the seed is dry, just literally sprinkle it on our beds to grow coriander in the spring every season. And the dry seeds are also great in breads. So the coriander seeds, you can put them in your breads and it will just be a lovely flavor to add a little extra something. Now, I know you make a lot of uh, spice rubs or spice, you know, herbal spice, you know, concoctions. What are some mm -hmm. things that you might use for that? So we have a full line of salts that is meant to reflect what's growing on our farm and some of our favorite ingredients. We have from our spicy salt, which comes out in the summer, incorporating some of our favorite peppers, which is spicy, but not too spicy. We, our newest salt, which is called taco, and I feel really proud of it. It is packed with cilantro and charred onions. So any Mexican preparation from salsa, tacos, anything Mexican, it is really going to give like a really nice rich flavor to your dishes. We have a green curry inspired one that's back with basil and lemon verbena and garlic sauce that is just fantastic with any veggie dish. And our umo salt, which is our smoky salt packed with smoked tomatoes and peppers that is just excellent for briskets and any barbecue you're doing. Ooh, that sounds great. Now getting back to the cilantro, um, so then it'll, it'll bolt and it'll die, yes. but we don't have to give up that taste for the summer for salsas and recipes. We can grow Vietnamese yes. coriander. And you've said before, some people prefer this if they don't like the taste of cilantro. Absolutely. So in the summer, you, as we all know, you can't really grow cilantro in Texas. So you have two options. The two coriander berries that we grow at the farm is, as you mentioned, Vietnamese coriander, which is originally from Southeast Asia, 
grows really well to the su through the summer. It grows similar to mint, so it's a perennial. And it doesn't have that, what some people call like soapy aftertaste. Vietnamese coriander won't have that. It has a different, a, still a coriander flavor, but a very distinct note. So if you don't like cilantro, maybe Vietnamese coriander is for you. And the other one, which is an annual that grows fantastic throughout the summer, and it's originally from Mexico, it's papalo. Papalo is super simple to grow from seed. It grows like a weed once it gets in the summer, uh, and it sells seeds very readily. Uh, you can buy the seed from any of your regular purveyors, you know, Johnny's, Babes for Creek, uh, Seed Savers Exchange. So yeah, it's a fantastic herb originally from Mexico, and you can grow it all throughout the summer. It has some beautiful round-shaped leaves that we usually use, for example, in fish dishes. So you'll use like a couple of leaves of papalo, put it in your, in your fish, steam it, and once you open it, it's like just a little explosion of aroma. And does it return in the winter? I mean, does it return after winter? So it will die the moment it starts getting colder. So you know that moment in the fall when it's like, oh, we're finally getting into fall. Papalo will call it quits, will go into seed, it will spread out and it will come back uh, next summer. The seeds spread very similar to dandelions, where it's just like loads everywhere. So that's the other thing. If you don't want papal anywhere in your garden, maybe cut off the seed heads before they spread everywhere. There's another one you like, and that is sorrel. And so I didn't know that we could grow sorrel here. Tell us, how do you do it? And what does it taste like? I, I love, love sorrel. sorrel. It is it one, is of, one my of my favorite, favorite greens. greens. It, is it is super, super nutritious, nutritious, slightly, slightly tangy. tangy. It has, it has really, really tender leaves. leaves. And, yeah, and yeah, and it's, and it's also a perennial. The, the way, way we, we grow, grow it is we feed it out every fall once, once the temperatures start, start getting cooler. cooler. You will You'll be able to get a small harvest in the winter. Then it will basically stop growing. In the spring, you'll be able to get a big harvest. In the summer, it will look super sad, sad. It, it will said, said, it will go into, go into seed. seed, you just you let it let be, make sure you water it so it doesn't, so it doesn't die. die. And then and again then in the fall, fall you'll get another, get another harvest. harvest. But the important thing is you have to be patient. So again, since it's a perennial, it won't grow as fast as other greens, but if you take care of it in a year or two, you're gonna have bushes of sorrel that pretty much take care of themselves. So it is worth the effort of setting up a patch of sorrel it will come back every year, and it is a great green to add to your, to your mix. It is getting hot, but we can still plant peppers. Is that right? Absolutely. We are still in the window where you can plant peppers, and you'll be able to get a harvest before cold weather strikes. So, yeah, we're coming at the tail end of when we should plant peppers, but definitely since it's been a milder year, you can still get away with it. And so what are some of the favorite ones that you like to grow? One pepper that I love recommending to everybody because I, everybody that I recommended this pepper likes it. I feel it's a people pleaser, uh, lemon drop peppers. So lemon drop peppers are from the ahi family. They are about like four inch long. They mature to bright yellow. They have spiciness similar to a serrano but a very fruity flavor. So you can eat them raw, you can dry them and use the powder like a spice mix. You can use them in salsa, ceviches. It's an incredibly versatile pepper and it's very, very productive. So once you have a lemon drop pepper established, you are gonna get enough to share with your neighbors, with your friends. So it's a pepper that's not hard to grow, and the reward is amazing. What do you think about mulch for the garden? Is there a favorite one that you recommend to home gardeners? I love that you mentioned mulch. Again, we are going into the summer and it's really important not to leave your soil bare. Exposed soil will be killed in the sun and really hot weather. So if you cover your soil with mulch, you're protecting your soil, you're increasing the temperature regulation and moisture retention of your soil, which is great. And eventually the mulch will break down and form part of the nutrients into your soil. 
at our farm, we had mulch every spring and every fall to protect our soil. And you can really, really see the payoff. And we have to water less, our soil is healthier, our plants grow longer through the summer since, again, the roots are able to stay cool. And mulch, we get it from Austin Wood Recycle, which is a great local company that, you know, all the trees that uh, the city cuts or whatever, they go into Austin Wood Recycles, they mulch it, they let it partially compost. So we get a partially composted hardwood mulch. So since it's partially composted, it's already starting to break down. So it will compost into your soil really nicely. Speaking of heat and compost, why should we compost then every new season as well? In the garden, everything starts with the soil. You are seeing um, plants that are stressed out. You are seeing too many pests. All these problems can usually boil down to your soil. So if you make sure to add compost every season or every time you're growing, you're making sure that you're putting more into the soil than what you're taking. If you start taking more from your soil than what you're putting into, you're going to see it deteriorate every season, which you don't want as a gardener. As a gardener, I believe you should every season invest in soil. It's going to be worth it. I remember our first season in the farm, the amount of pests, the amount of weeds, and slowly, season by season, by taking care of our soil, we see pest pressure go down. We see healthier plants. It's just, we have to do less work slowly by slowly investing in our soil. Wonderful advice. That is the first starting point for any gardener. And it's the shortcut that a lot of us, you know, we say, oh, let me just go plant something. We don't think about the soil. And then we have these problems. And then one last thing about summer gardening is... It gets so intense here, and can shade cloth help people out? Give it a break. Any kind of shade cloth just to deflect those rays a bit. If you really want to garden through the summer and you love being outside, I would really recommend investing in some shade cloth. A uh, shade cloth, you can buy it from um, online, and there's different percentages of it depending on what you're growing and how much protection from the sun. So you can have like a 30% that will give you like a mild protection if you're doing something like peppers and tomatoes. Whereas if you're doing flowers, you probably want to do something that's a lot more reflective. At our farm, we use in our shade house for the summer, we, it's called aluminate, which is covered in like kind of a very reflective material. And even in the middle of August, the moment you step into the shade house you immediately feel, feel it it is the amount of radiation that it just reflects off it is so noticeable so that's how we're personally we're able to grow our flowers throughout the summer so we have a shade house where we have like it's our noah's ark where we have like one of each to make sure that they survive through the season well this is such great information for us alejandra now i want to race out and start composting and planting tell us uh, give us your website so people can kind of keep up with what's going on with urban farm things have been kind of different these days and i know people want to stay in touch with you absolutely you can stay in touch with us by following us following us on instagram facebook at la flaca atx you can also go to our website uh, laflacaatx.com where you can buy all our salts. You can subscribe to our newsletter. We send out every month with what's going on at the farm, planting tips, maybe like a free shipping coupon. So yeah, go to our website, go through our social media, send us an email. We love answering your questions and connecting with you. Well, thank you very much. And thank you all for joining us today. You can also get more resources at centraltexasgardener.org. And of course, watch Alejandra's segments about liqueurs and edible flowers. And please stay with us. You can subscribe to our newsletter too to keep up in touch with CTG. So thank you again, Alejandra. Let's go out and start planting something. Let's get out of Linda. Great talking to you. Thank you so much for having me.